Good morning, everyone. Carla here, and welcome to episode two of Cacao with Carla. So today I'll be talking about building a relationship with your shadow. So again, uh, when I refer to shadow, shadow work, shadow integration, which is what I work with, um, with people, um, I'm referring to the parts of ourselves that are repressed, the parts of ourselves that are stuck reliving trauma loops over and over again subconsciously, waiting to be processed, waiting to be healed and integrated back into the rest of us. Um, therefore, expanding your access to your own personal power, expanding your access to being able to consciously create your reality, literal fucking magic is what we're talking about here. So tonight I do not have a cup of cacao. I have just some hot water with me that I'll be sipping on occasionally throughout this, this video. So um, again, if you're just joining, we're talking about building a relationship with your shadow, i.e. the parts of yourself that are containing a lot of the repressed aspects of yourself, repressed power, um, traumatic memories traumatic trauma loops all of all of those things so that you can become more whole and have full conscious control of your magic so the first um step or the first thing i like to share about building a relationship with the shadow in my approach to shadow integration versus shadow work is to not see any part of yourself as damaged or bad um, any sort of like shaming that you do um, towards yourself or aspects of yourself usually does not result in um, being able to access it very easily. Shame just has this physiological energetic effect of like drawing things in and closing them off. Uh, if you can imagine like how you feel, felt, especially as a little child being shamed for being too loud or, you know, dancing too much or, you know, not drawing pretty enough pictures or not being good enough artists or good enough at anything, it closes one off, it closes you off to receiving any sort of um, attention or anything else that can be perceived as threatening or scary. So seeing this, just like every part of yourself as a part of yourself that deserves love and affection and attention is like the basis of how I personally like to approach shadow integration. And the second step I like to use is symbols, symbology. Um, and there's several ways you can do that. If you notice, if you're a gamer, like I used to be, and you play a game over and over again, you start to dream that you're like playing the game, or if you work all of your waking hours, and sometimes you go to dream, uh, to go to bed, and you dream about being at work, it's because your subconscious is being fed all of these images all day, and then it starts to use these images to speak to you, to the conscious mind, and you know, some dreams, I don't think like all dreams are super, um, what do you call it, like, meaningful or these these mystical things like some dreams are really just like your brain like trying to process like what the fuck happened that day and then other dreams they use those um that same set of visual symbols to communicate with you so that is why i started using the tarot deck because um so this is the tarot deck that i like to use this is the Thoth deck, T-H-O-T-H, -H, so some people say Toth, Thoth, whatever. Um, so just having like an oracle deck or a, like a, a tarot deck can be really useful because when I first started using this, I had severe anxiety. Like I wake up in the morning and go to bed at night just like constantly thinking about what could happen and what I should be doing in case of these like crazy things happening and trying to like manage stress from things that haven't even happened yet and then like managing stress from things that were happening in my life. Um, so when I approached the, the tarot, I wasn't even trying to figure out like, you know, to predict the future. I just wanted to give my brain something to project onto because I was understanding that my projections and my thoughts, thoughts are things, my projections were creating my reality. And even if I wasn't experiencing the things that I was worried about in my body, my body was still producing, uh, was still reacting as if I was 
you know, uh, going to be homeless the next day or whether, you know, it was reacting as if like I wouldn't have something to eat the next day or reacting as if I would get fired for my job or reacting as if like, you know, I'm getting rejected by that guy I like, like whatever it is, um, the body does not, you know, differentiate between a thought and, you know, an imagining and reality. So like it reacts to everything and it stores all of that. So I was like, okay, well, if I can take my active ass imagination that is currently going towards creating this anxiety loop, maybe I can just pull some tarot cards in the morning. And, you know, I see a card that looks like this. And after I've, I, you know, I would dream journal. So I would always like wake up immediately dream before I picked up my phone. And then I pull a card or two and I would just stare at the card and see what kind of symbols I would pull out of it. It's like, okay, well, I see like a phoenix over here. Um, or maybe, you know, I pull this card the next week and all of a sudden like my eye is going towards like this, you know, this um, crescent symbol or something like that. So I would start to use um, really symbol rich um media like tarot or you know other types of things that i found interesting like video games or you know um, a particular artist's paintings and i would just stare at it and i notice what my mind was projecting onto what symbols i was pulling out what feelings it was evoking in my body and then over time i started training my brain to um, use these symbols in the tarot to communicate with me in my dreams. I would start to see these symbols um, matching things that were happening in my daily life. So in some ways, um, sometimes pulling a tarot card would be like, oh my gosh, like that exact thing happened today, or it would be like, okay, like there's something about the color red today and I feel really drawn to it and it's evoking something in me. So I was getting all parts of me, mental, energetic, body level, all speaking the same language and then my subconscious speaking the same language and from that space, it was much easier to, um, to communicate with and influence my shadow, my inner child, like all of these other things because there was a shared language. And this is something that Carolyn Elliott also talks about in her work. Um, so if you if you, have you if you've not read or listened to the audiobook Existential Kink, Existential Kink is one of my favorite shadow work books out there. When people ask me if there's like any other um, any other material that I advise reading like Carolyn Elliott's work is freaking phenomenal with that and she has a very embodied approach too. So just wanted to drop that there. Um, so I, so like, yeah, what have I talked about? I've talked about shared symbol rich language, visual symbol rich language. I've talked about, um, let's see, what was the other thing? It was creating safe space from last, from last week, like creating safe space, whether that's, you know, even if that's like in your car, that's really important. And I said something else, hmm. Mm. I forgot literally the first thing that I just said. Um, mm. Oh, not shaming yourself. That's right. Okay, so not shaming yourself in using some sort of symbol rich something to um, align your subconscious and your conscious mind to speak the same language, preferably something pictorial like the tarot. Um, and just like on another note, like I when people ask me about like reading tarot or like, oh my gosh, like you know how to read the tarot, you taught yourself how to do that. It was purely from that practice that I just described, like where I would wake up in the morning and I would dream journal. I would look at to see like which symbols stood out to me and I would feel into what I, what the messages I felt like I was getting from it. And then I would Google the definition of it. So after years of doing that and then incorporating the cacao into my practice, then I started opening up my channel and would um, I still channel messages directly that sometimes have to do with the card. Sometimes I don't have anything to do with the card. Um, but when people talk about reading tarot, I feel like it's a really important. It's really important to create your own relationships with things which is again why i'm talking about building a relationship with a shadow because there is no set 
like no one can come and tell you what something means in your life or the significance of something like being able to build your own intuition and start like building your own catalog your own relationships to these parts of yourself your own relationships to deities that you may work with your own relationships to the way that the universe wants to talk to you whether it's through sending you certain people or showing you certain videos or or whatever being able to understand and recognize that language consciously again helps with influencing and integrating your shadow so integrating your shadow again meaning um becoming an approval of what you're creating so that instead of having this energy of shame and like being against something because it's really easy for us as humans to be like oh well instead of um instead of clarifying what I'm standing for and what I want, it's a lot easier to see what's fucked up or not working or whatever in our lives and go like, I don't want that. I don't want that kind of relationship. I don't wanna live in that kind of house. I don't want that kind of job. Um, and like, like taking a moment to realize like, okay, like my thoughts, my, my beliefs have created this reality. This is what I'm experiencing and my shadow, um, can show me what it like like you can just look at your life and see like what it is that you think that you deserve what it is that you enjoy do you enjoy being lorded over and having people tell you what to do do you enjoy struggling every month and like using your creativity in a way to make ends meet and to always seem to just have enough money for all the things you need to have the money for because maybe a long time ago, your mom told you that you weren't creative or like your art wasn't good. It's like, or you thought of yourself at some point, you learned that you weren't creative. So even though we all have creative energy, we are all magicians, we're all artists, we're all weird, fucking witchy, wizardy, dragony, fairy like beings. Like we all have that part of us. But when it's repressed and we're told or we, we don't identify with that part, it starts using its magic to fuck up other things and just just to create other things and it shows up in places that aren't necessarily um, always consciously enjoyable. Um, though I find that when I really, 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 really sit with it for a moment and I think, hmm what am I getting out of this situation? What am I getting out of having this job that I feel like so tired at the end of the day after? Is it that I get to hide and stay small and pretend that I am powerless? Do I get to pretend that um, the world is as fucked up as my parents told me it was? Is it that I feel like I belong to a certain group if I if I'm struggling or all sharing the struggle, like, you know, what is it that you're getting out of that? And again, like creating that relationship with your shadow and like starting to pick some sort of symbolic, rich medium, art, tarot, whatever it is, can help you start to see like what it is that you like about the situation where you are right now because unlike just regular manifestation things are just you know they're kind of like fighting against your reality it's like okay like i really want a million dollars and i'm just gonna focus on the million dollars and you know tell myself my um my affirmations every day and like i'm i'm rich i'm wealthy i'm abundant i'm gonna i i have my million dollars sitting in the bank right now but without really checking in with your body and like acknowledging where you are right now and then moving from that space of approving like okay cool i can celebrate that i have created this and these are the things that i'm getting out of it even if it's fucked up and doesn't make any sense whatsoever and now that I've fully enjoyed and thoroughly luxuriated in the brattiness that I get to have, or the fact that I only get angry when I am experiencing, like for me, like I'll just share, I had a lot of work to do around expressing my anger. And I was very like closed off with the throat shocker. I hated speaking, me doing video at that point, ugh, like never. Um, writing, mm, forget about it. And I saw that there is a connection between not wanting to speak up for myself, not wanting to hold my boundaries, not wanting to like share my, my ideas with the world and repressing my anger because anger is a very, um, by its nature, it's like anger is trying to tell you that there's something in your immediate 
happenings environment that needs to change for you to be safe and once that thing is you know addressed then you can be safe so it would come out in the form of road rage i had intense road rage i remember there was a um a friend riding with me once and i thought i was like tamping it down and like trying to be like super not like scary but they looked at me and they're like yo like are you okay like and then i remember all the times i've said like really fucking racist shit while driving and like in the middle of like a road rage <laughs> like just like blah like everybody else is like shitty or dumb or whatever and i was like wow like is this the only time that i allow myself to get angry about anything or like to even like raise my voice and then i started sitting with that anger and like seeing the other things that i wanted to express my anger about that i wasn't expressing anger about like the other places i wanted to have more control in my life because i feel like a lot of that road rage was about control as well um so they just like inviting you just to sit with that and see like where is a part of your life or like this is the one area where you allow yourself to to express and then everywhere else you have to be like you know calm cool collected and like you know very overly aware of what other people will think or being good or whatever um so with that that feels like a really good stopping point so i'm going to take a hot water break if you have any questions i'll be here and i'll be happy to answer them for you I do have to keep this week's episode a little bit shorter. I have another <laughs> another meeting right after this this video. So if there's anything that you have a question about, I am here and waiting. And if you're just joining, I'm just waiting for questions. I just did a whole spiel um and she can go back and watch the replay and i'm just waiting to see if anybody has any specific questions about creating your relationship with your shadow which 2020 i feel like you know kind of forced a lot of a lot of us into that <laughs> spending time alone is you know kind of essential to that process mm -mm. Well, I don't see any comments or questions coming in, so I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. There are some different also changes coming to, um, to how I share things. So I have some a few things I'm considering just to make things more streamlined. Um, and once I have all of that, all of those pieces figured out and organized. I will share more about that here, but there is a private group coming up soon so that all of us can gather there and I can share more educational materials, go deeper about stuff and provide a community of people that are doing this kind of work together. So until next time, have a wonderful, awesome, juicy, dark, interesting day. Peace.